Welcome to the Advanced Cardiac Life Support Chapter on Acute Stroke. Stroke is one of the leading causes of death in the United States. Approximately 700,000 people suffer from stroke every year in the U.S., and 1 in 15 deaths are stroke-related. Early detection of stroke is vital to reduce brain damage or further complications as IV fibrinolytic treatments need to be administered within three hours of the onset of symptoms. Understanding the signs and symptoms of stroke as well as a prompt speed of response is crucial not only to saving a life, but also to maintaining the quality of life of an individual. A stroke occurs when there is an insufficient blood supply to the parts of the brain. There are two types of stroke. An ischemic stroke is caused when a clot blocks an artery in the brain, so blood cannot flow properly to the brain, and this type accounts for 85% of stroke cases. A hemorrhagic stroke, which includes both intercerebral and subarachnoid, occurs less often and is caused when a blood vessel in the brain ruptures, resulting in bleeding around the brain tissue. Adequate stroke care is intended to reduce brain injury and increase the patient's chance of survival and recovery. The American Heart Association has identified eight Ds of stroke care, which are important in the diagnosis and treatment of a stroke. They are as follows. Detection for the rapid recognition of stroke symptoms. Dispatch for the early activation and dispatch of EMS by 911. Delivery for rapid EMS identification, management, and transport of the patient. Door for the appropriate triage to the stroke center. Data for the rapid triage, evaluation, and management with ED. Decision for stroke expertise and therapy selection. Drug for fibrinolytic therapy and intraarterial strategies. And finally, disposition for the rapid admission to the stroke unit or critical care unit. When the chain of survival is used in stroke victims, brain injury and risk of death are greatly reduced. The stroke chain of survival goes as follows. First, quick identification of and reaction to the signs of stroke. Second, quick EMS dispatch and response. Next, rapid transport by EMS and notification prior to arrival at the hospital. And finally, quick diagnosis and treatment upon the patient's arrival to the hospital. To see the full algorithm for the management of an acute stroke, you can refer to the chart in this chapter. The Cincinnati Pre-Hospital Stroke Scale shows that the best ways to recognize signs and symptoms of a stroke. There is likely facial droop. Under normal circumstances, both sides of the face move equally, whereas a stroke is indicated with abnormal movement where one side of the face does not move at all. There may also be arm weakness or drift, which is abnormal and one arm drifts compared to the other arm. In normal situations, both arms move equally or not at all. Abnormal speech is also an indicator of a stroke and may appear slurred or the patient may use incorrect or inappropriate words or be mute. If any of these previous three indicators is abnormal, the probability of a stroke is 72%. The presence of all three of these findings signals that the probability of stroke is higher than 85%. Now, let's talk about the goals of stroke patient treatment so that the patient has the highest chance of recovery and survival. There should be a quick general assessment within 10 minutes and a quick neurological assessment in 25 minutes. A CT scan of the patient's head should be taken in 25 minutes followed by a quick interpretation of the CT in 45 minutes. There should be fibrinolytic therapy within 60 minutes of arrival to the emergency department and within three hours of the onset of symptoms. The patient should be admitted to a monitored bed. The purpose of taking a CT scan of the patient's head is to discern between an ischemic and a hemorrhagic stroke. The most common type of CT scan for an acute stroke patient is non-contrast. As far as treatments go, fibrinolytic therapy may be considered for non-hemorrhagic stroke patients with no additional signs or symptoms. For hemorrhagic stroke patients, you should consider consulting a neurologist or a neurosurgeon as hemorrhagic stroke patients do not qualify for fibrinolytics. A patient who is qualified will be assessed for fibrinolytic therapy. If there is no hemorrhaging on the CT scan and the patient does not qualify for fibrinolytic therapy, they should be given aspirin. The National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke protocol and criteria show that tissue plasmogen activator or TPA 
should be the first line treatment administered within three hours of the onset of symptoms for patients who have acute ischemic stroke. The AHA guidelines recommend IV TPA administration for patients with acute ischemic stroke. To qualify a patient for fibrinolytic therapy, a checklist must be applied. When going through the fibrinolytic therapy checklist, all of the following conditions should be met for the patient to qualify. The patient is at least 18 years old. There is a diagnosis of ischemic stroke with the neurological deficit and the time of symptoms onset is less than three hours. As you continue through the checklist when looking at the following criteria, all answers should be no for these conditions. Is there an intracranial hemorrhage on the non-contrast head CT? Does the presentation of the patient show subarachnoid hemorrhage even with a normal CT? Is there a multilobar infarction on the CT with a hypodensity greater than one-third of the cerebral hemisphere? Does the patient have a history of intracranial hemorrhage? Does the patient have hypertension? Or is the systolic blood pressure greater than 185 mmHg? Or the diastolic blood pressure less than 110 mmHg on repeated measurements? Is there arteriovenous malformation, neoplasm, or aneurysm? Was there a seizure witnessed at the onset of the stroke? Does the patient have active internal bleeding or acute trauma or fracture? Is there acute bleeding diastasis, including a platelet count of less than 100,000 mm3 or heparin received within 48 hours? with an activated partial thromboplastin time greater than the upper limit of normal or current use of an anticoagulant with international normalized ratio or greater than 1.7 prothrombin time of more than 12 seconds. Does the patient have a history of intracranial or intraspinal surgery, serious head trauma, or previous stroke within the past three months? Has the patient had an arterial puncture at a non-compressible site within the past seven days? Remember, the answer to all of these questions should be no. There are also some relative contraindications and precautions that must be considered when going through the fibrinolytic therapy checklist. They are as follows. Symptoms are not major and improve quickly and spontaneously or it has been 14 days since major surgery or trauma, or the patient has had a gastrointestinal or urinary tract hemorrhage in the previous 21 days, or the patient has an acute myocardial infarction in the previous three months, or the patient has post-myocardial infarction pericarditis, or the patient has an abnormal blood glucose level of 400 milligrams per deciliter. This was the chapter on acute stroke. Congratulations, you have now completed the Advanced Cardiac Life Support online course. Please proceed to the quiz when you are ready.